Look, all I have to say is you guys are in for a treat. All right, what's up guys? My name is Jacques Orja Q, and today we're gonna add it like Boson Bunch. But before we get started, quick disclaimer, I cannot cover every single effect he does in every single one of his videos because dude, this guy is insane. He has an insane amount of effects that he does. So in this video, I'm only gonna be able to cover four of them. Those of which being this color glow, this fast shake, this rotation warp transition, and this zoom warp transition. But before we hop into these effects, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. I cover a lot of content on this channel that's focused on helping you guys make content the way that you wanna make it. But you guys better like this video because not only did it take me an extreme amount of time to replicate this in Premiere, I had to take extremely detailed notes so I don't mess up what I'm about to tell you because this stuff is actually insane. Now the first effect we're going to be covering is this color glow effect. So let's go ahead, hop in Premiere, and I'll show you guys what we're getting into today. All right, so I have some CSGO footage here on the timeline that we're going to be messing with. But to begin, go ahead and go to the project files in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. Right click and go to new item and then add in an adjustment layer. Go ahead and make that 60 frames per second. Hit OK, and then drag this onto your timeline. Also, to make sure to trim this down because we're not going to need all of it. Also, a quick side note before we dive into these things, all of these effects are extremely quick. So to actually understand how quick these are going on and how quick you need to make your effects, uh, we're going to be using the in and the out key. And by that, I mean you hit your I key on your timeline to add an in, then you move your playhead forward a bit, you hit your O key to add it out. Now, what this will allow you to do is look into the bottom right-hand corner of your preview window and you see a time. And essentially, this is the time that I'm going to be referring to in this video about how long or how fast these effects should be. So in this effect, the entire effect is lasting only about 0.16 seconds. So we're going to adjust ours a hair a bit longer. Then we're going to drag this to where our front bracket aligns with the very beginning of our clip. Then we're going to move our adjustment layer, cut it down to those links, and then go ahead and move it up one uh, layer here on the timeline. Next, you're going to hold your Alt key, left click on your video file, and then drag up to make a duplicate. Now, after this, you're going to go ahead and grab your out bracket and move it to where you get about a 0 0.05 seconds on that bracket. Then you're going to get your C key, and that's going to bring up your cut tool, and you're going to cut exactly where that out bracket is. And now we can actually add effects in. <laughs> so go to effects in the top right hand corner of your screen and look for an effect called transform. Then drag that onto your adjustment layer. After that, go ahead and look for an effect called color key. Take that and add it onto your top video layer on the right side. Next, look for an effect called color balance. You're gonna want the one that has the HLS at the very end of it and drag it onto your bottom video layer. All right, next, go ahead and click on your adjustment layer and then go to the effects controls in the top left and scroll down a little bit. For this effect, we're gonna be animating position and scale. Our first scale keyframe is gonna be at 100 and then we're gonna move our play at forward a bit until we get to where this bracket is cut. You can see it here on the effects controls and also on your timeline, basically. Uh, and then you're gonna add a scale value in of 130. Then you're gonna take your arrow keys on your keyboard, move to the left one frame, and you're gonna change your scale to 105. Go ahead and click this go to the next keyframe button and go to back to your 130 keyframe. Grab this one that we made at the beginning from our position and drag it on top of that. It should auto lock on. Next, you're gonna move your playhead forward a little bit and change the Y value of your position to 450. Then you're gonna move your playhead forward again one more time and change your Y value to 560. Lastly, you're going to move your playhead forward one more time and go ahead and hit this reset key so then it'll get you a default keyframe and then also do the same for the scale. All right, next, you're going to go ahead and hit your I key and add it in and then go ahead and your O key and add it out. And you're going to want to set this to 0 0.04 seconds. Now, what we're going to have to do is get, grab all these keyframes and bunch them into that little bracket area. So go ahead and just start bunching these together and then try to space them as evenly as possible, roughly to where it looks like this. Then select all of your position keyframes, right click, go to Templar Interpolation, then go to Bezier. Next, scroll down a bit, you hit this box that says use composition shutter angle and then change it to 360. All right, and that's all we have to do for that adjustment layer. Now we're gonna go to that top video layer, go to effects controls in the top left and scroll down a bit. All right, now this is where you have to make a decision with what you wanna have going on in your clip. So in mine, I'm gonna choose white, but you have to choose basically what you want to glow, not the color you want it to glow, but what you actually want to glow. So in my case, I'm going to choose white. My white will basically affect the ground in my clip and also some of the wall. But let's say if I wanted to choose blue, my blue will affect the sky. So that's what's actually going to be changing color. But like I said, in mine, we're going to do white. So what you do is go to your key color. You hit this eyedropper tool and then you just click on whatever you want to glow. Then you're going to move your playhead all the way to the beginning. Go down to color tolerance and hit the stopwatch next to that. And you're going to go ahead and change that to 200. Then you're gonna move your playhead all the way to the end of the adjustment layer. And then you're gonna change that color tolerance to zero. All right, and that's all you have to do for that top video layer. So now we're gonna to go to the bottom one. We're gonna be changing our lightness to 13. We're gonna be changing our saturation to 100. And this is the point where you have to choose what color you want your thing to glow. So like I said, my ground is gonna be glowing, but I'm gonna choose the color of like this pinkish purple because that's what Boson bunched in his video. So to do that, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and change your hue value to 280. 
Now, essentially what this is, is like a color wheel almost. So let's say you want a different color. Basically what you're gonna do is grab your hue and basically move through this color value and find what you wanna have. It moves through a value of zero to 360. So basically just, basically just look through those values and figure out whatever color you want your thing to glow. All right, and then here you go. Here's that like color flash effect. Like I said, these effects have a lot going on, but on the bright side, this next effect doesn't have a lot going on. But the next effect we're gonna be covering is this really fast shake that's going on. But like I said, it's not too difficult to do. So we're gonna hop in here and I'll show you guys how to do this one. Now in Boson's video, he does a lot of these in very quick succession. So now we're gonna use that time bracket again. And basically you're gonna to wanna to move your inninger out to about 0 0.03 seconds. Yeah, it's, it's quick. Next, go ahead back to your project files in the bottom left, grab an adjustment layer, and then trim that down to where it's fitting that 0 0.03 seconds. Next, go to the effects on the top right and look for our friend transform. Go ahead and drag that onto that adjustment layer. Now select that adjustment layer, go to the effects controls in the top left and scroll down a little bit. And for this effect, we're gonna be messing with position and scale. So go ahead and hit the stopwatch next to both of those. We're gonna leave those keyframes at default. So we're gonna move our playhead forward a little bit to roughly around, to roughly around the middle of this uh, adjustment layer. Go ahead and change your scale value to 130. Then move your playhead all the way to the end and hit that reset key to reset your scale back to 100. Basically just adjust this until it's in the middle. While we're here, go ahead and hit the reset key for the position. Just go ahead and set that one. Next, you're gonna move your playhead in between the middle keyframe for scale and the final keyframe for scale. And then go to position and change the Y value to 610. Next, move your playhead in between your first and second scale keyframe and go ahead and change your Y value on your position to 490. Next, try to line this up to where it's in the middle between these two scale keyframes. And lastly, you're gonna scroll down a bit, hit this use composition shutter angle, and then change it to 360. And then boom, here's a nice quick fast shake effect. Like I said, it was not too bad, but the next one is bad. But hey, looks pretty cool. All right, next we have this like rotation warp transition. And honestly, it was like one of the things that made me very excited to do this video. There is a lot of things going on, but trust me, I'm gonna try to make it as simple as possible for you guys. So let's hop in here and I'll show you how to do this one. All right, and since this is a transition, I do have two clips that are mating up basically from different parts in that CSGO footage. So what you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and move your playhead to the very beginning of your clip. Go and hit your I key, then move it forward and hit your O key so we get that in and out bracket. And then you're gonna want your bracket size to be roughly about 0.25 seconds. Next, we're gonna grab an adjustment layer from our project files, move it on over and trim it down. Now we're gonna have to make some duplicates of this adjustment layer. So hold your Alt key, drag one down, hold your Alt key again and drag one up. Now for this top adjustment layer, it's kind of like a spice on top effect and it's not really noticeable, but I'm gonna show you guys how to do it anyway. What you're gonna wanna do is kind of shrink this adjustment layer down to roughly about this size. It's not really super important to have there as like an exact thing, but trust me, it'll look nice later. Next, you're gonna move this bottom adjustment layer and then trim it down to where your two clips are meeting. All right, next, we're gonna add in a lot of effects, but trust me, this isn't gonna be too bad. Go to the effects in the top right and look for one called VR Chromatic Aberrations. It's gonna be under Immersive Video and then drag that onto that tiny adjustment layer at the top. Next, look for an effect called Twirl. You'll find it under Distort and then they're gonna move that onto that middle adjustment layer. Next, look for Transform, the one we use for basically everything under Distort. Move it onto that middle adjustment layer again. Next, we're gonna look for an effect called Replicate under Stylize and you're gonna move that onto that bottom adjustment layer. And then you're gonna finally look for an effect called Mirror which is gonna be under distort, and you're gonna add four of these to that bottom adjustment layer. All right, now we're gonna cover the really quick ones to make this simple and easy. So we're gonna to go to this top adjustment layer, go to the effects controls on the top left and scroll down a bit, move your playhead to the very beginning of that adjustment layer, and then hit your stopwatch for the aberration red and aberration blue. Change your aberration red value to zero, your aberration blue value to zero, then move your playhead to around the middle of this adjustment layer. Go ahead and change your aberration red to negative five, and then your aberration blue to five, then lastly, move your playhead to the very end again and change your aberration red to zero and aberration blue to zero. All right, next, go to that bottom adjustment layer, go to the effects controls on the top left, scroll down a bit. You're gonna wanna change your replicate count to three. And then to make this easier on you guys, I'm just gonna give you the values for these motion tiles. Basically, I'm gonna give you the motion tile that you're gonna be changing. I'm gonna give you the X and the Y value. And then I'm gonna give you the reflection angle that you're gonna be changing on that mirror. And so I'm not leaving you guys blind. Here's what your mirror should look like when you're done changing all those values. All right. Those were the easy ones. Now we're gonna move on to what is really going on and what's making what's actually happening in this effect happen. So go ahead, select that middle adjustment layer and then go to the effects controls in the top left, scroll down a little bit. What you're gonna wanna go ahead and do is move your playhead to where your two clips are meeting in the middle. Then hit the stopwatch next to angle under twirl and then go ahead and change this twirl value to negative 100. Then you're gonna use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move to the right one frame and change your twirl value to 50. Then you're gonna move your playhead all the way to the end and go ahead and hit the reset key, which will give you an angle of 
zero. And then you're gonna move your playhead to roughly about this area. It doesn't have to be exact, but hit that reset key again to get the zero keyframe. Next, you're gonna to wanna to hit this arrow next to angle to bring this drop down menu. Then what you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do is select all of these keyframes, right click and hit Bezier. Next, we're gonna select this middle keyframe on the left. Next, select this middle keyframe on the left here and then grab this little circle. And then move it down to where this line's pretty short, but basically you're gonna to want a pretty slow curve at the beginning and then it's gonna sharply curve down. Next, go ahead and do that the same on this right side here and do it roughly around here. And then there you go, that's all you have to do with twirl. So you can go ahead and hit this arrow next to angle and twirl again so we can go ahead and just get that out of the way. Next, we're gonna be messing with transition and we're gonna be messing with scale and rotation. So we can go ahead and hit the stopwatch next to both of those and make sure those keyframes are at the very beginning of your adjustment layer. All right, and to make this easier so you're not having to adjust the playhead position like multiple times, we're gonna be messing with the scale and rotation at the same time. So first you're gonna move your playhead to where these two clips are meeting in the middle and you're gonna change your scale value to 400 and then go ahead and set your rotation to negative five. Also, we're gonna be messing with the, the composition shutter angle and the shutter angle. So, so go ahead and hit the stopwatch next to both of those two. And for this keyframe under the use composition shutter angle, make sure it's unboxed and then also change your shutter angle to 360. Next, use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move to the left one frame and then click this box that says use composition shutter angle again to turn it back on. Next, you use your airheads again to move to the right two frames. You're gonna change your scale value to 700. Then you're gonna change your rotation value to 90. All right, next move your playhead to the very end of your adjustment layer and you're gonna change your scale to 300 and your rotation to zero. Next, you're gonna take your playhead and move it to where it's basically between these two keyframes on the scale and rotation. You're gonna to wanna to set a scale value of 280, a rotation value of negative two, and you're gonna change your shutter angle to zero. Next, go ahead and select all of these keyframes. Don't forget the ones at the very beginning too. Then you're gonna to wanna to right click and then go to Bezier. Then you're gonna hit this arrow next to scale and we're gonna mess with all these values again. And luckily there's not a lot you have to change. Basically just go to this middle keyframe on the right side grab this little arrow and then make it to where it's pointing down pretty much similar to how we did with the twirl where it's looking roughly like this. All right, and here you go. Here's that rotation warp transition we have going on. And like I said, there's a lot going on, but this next transition is a lot easier because we're gonna use some of the same elements that we just made in this transition. All right, and the next transition that we are covering is the zoom warp transition. But in the top of the mirror, I'll show you guys how to do this one that isn't actually so bad now. All right, now first you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and hit your I and your O key to add those brackets back in, and you're gonna weigh in for your brackets or left, and then you're gonna make once and then you're gonna to wanna to make your brackets throw about roughly 0.15 seconds. Next, I've gone ahead and already copied over that chromatic aberrations adjustment layer in that adjustment layer that had the replicate and all the mirrors that we already made to just save you guys some time. Next, go ahead and go back to the project files and add in an adjustment layer and trim it down to the size you need. Go ahead and hold your Alt key, left click, and drag it up to duplicate that again. All right, next, go to the effects on the top right and go ahead and look for an effect called lens distortion. There's gonna be a lot of these, but basically just go ahead and minimize this lens distortion removal. Go down to distort and, un and you'll find Find lens distortion there. Go ahead and drag that on the, to that top adjustment layer and then look up an effect called transform once again. Then go ahead and drag that on top of the top adjustment layer and that middle adjustment layer. All right, we're gonna start by messing with this top adjustment layer. So go ahead and select that, go to the top left corner of your screen. You're gonna wanna move your play to the very beginning of that adjustment layer. Go ahead and hit the stopwatch next to curvature and have that zero value, then drag it all the way to the end and then hit this add keyframe button to add another zero value and then move the playhead to where it's in between these two keyframes and basically in the middle here. And you're gonna to wanna to change your curvature value to negative 75. Next, what you're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and select all of these keyframes. Go ahead and right click and change into the Bezier. And that's as far as we have to go with lens distortion. So go ahead and hit the arrow next to lens distortion to, to break it down so we don't have to look at it anymore. Now what you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and move your playhead to where these two clips uh, meet in the middle here. And we're gonna be messing with position and rotation. So go ahead and hit the stopwatch next to both of those. Move your playhead forward a bit. We're gonna be messing with position and rotation at the same time. So go ahead and change the X value on your position to 965 and then to change the rotation to 0 0.5. Next, move your playhead forward again, change the X value and position to 955, and then the rotation to negative 0 0.05. Lastly, you're gonna move your playhead one more time to the very end, change your X value to 963, and then your rotation to 0 0.3. You're gonna want these roughly evenly spaced, but after that, you're gonna go ahead and select all of them. Make sure to grab these last two at the beginning. Right click on it and then go to temporal interpolation and go down to Bezier. And that's it for that top adjustment layer. Now we're gonna move on to this middle one. Go to the effects controls on the top left, scroll down. And for this effect, we're only be messing with scale. So let's go ahead and move your playhead to the very beginning of that adjustment layer and hit the stopwatch next to scale. And our first value is going to be 300. Next, you're gonna move, move your playhead to where these two clips meet. You're gonna to wanna to set a value of 400. Use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move over to the right one frame, and then set your scale value to 250. And lastly, you're gonna move your playhead to the very end again, and change your scale to 300. Next, you're gonna to wanna to select all these keyframes again, and make sure that they're all Bezier 2. 
go ahead and hit the arrow next to scale to make it all scroll down a little bit we're gonna just use keyframes like we have in the past basically you're gonna want that curve kind of going really slow and then all of a sudden it really picks up speed right before this effect happens or right before the transition happens then you're going to do the same thing on the right side here something to watch out for whenever you're doing this you don't want this line to be curving up because that's going to mess with the scale of it you really want it to where it's basically like a really flat line and then it gets really close to that that keyframe in the middle and then it picks up a lot of speed looking sort of like this Oof, okay, and here you go. Here's that like zoom warp transition we just made, which is also going to be the last effect we're gonna be covering for this video. But if you found any of these effects helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. I cover a lot of content on this channel that's focused on helping you guys make content the way that you wanna make it. Also, let me know down in the comments below if there's somebody else or something else you want me to cover in a future video. Until next time, peace. I actually can't tell you guys how many times I've gone to record a video, gone all the way through it, and then realized that my phone overheated halfway through and I lost the whole thing and then I had to re-record the whole video.